All right, hello everybody. Uh, today I had the thought of moving forward and we can go ahead and start using STAR. Um, what STAR is, is it's a tool that allows us to build an index. Um, we can build an index of the mouse genome and then once we have that index, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, map the reads with those index files against the genome. Then we'll be able to find out the location of each of those reads where they're mapping in the genome. Once we're done with that, what we can go ahead and do is do read counts or counting all of the reads for a particular transcript or location in the genome. And then later on, what that allows us to do is differential gene expression. Um, in our case, the differential gene expression will be based on the treatments as well as the different mice that we had. So we had a mouse that was p53 knockout and we also had um, mice that were wild type and then the treatments that we had is we had a control as well as an irradiated mouse so mice treated with radiation versus just mice living uh, we uh, below i'll post a link to the a manuscript that r is from it's called star ultra fast universal rna seq align uh, a liner. Um, we'll see if I have it pulled up and I don't. Uh, but I'll post that down below and I'll also post the manual for it. Um, something to keep in mind is that if you look at the manual for STAR, you'll see a ton of different flags and there's way more there than what we're going to deal with. But just for future reference, if we want to go back and do something like the human genome um, to make the index file, it's a little bit bigger. So we have to give a special flag to tell our personal computers to handle it in a certain way. Um, let's see. So the first thing that we have to do with star and the mouse genome files is build that index. So what is an index? Well, we can think of it in a similar way as to kind of how Google handles searching. So every single time you search, Google isn't searching every single website to find out if your search terms or whatever you're looking for is in those websites. They have an index or a sort of database that has all the information about those websites that it can quickly look against and query to find the appropriate website to give as a result. Uh, what we're gonna need for building the index is to have that that tar gz unzipped and uncom or uncompressed and put into a folder so to do that we can just run something like tar xvfz mus musculus and cbi and if you run this which i already have um, it's just going to uncompress this and open up the directory into this must musculus folder and if you hear thunder it's raining outside pretty bad i think we're in a flood warning but just a fyi if you hear that um, but since i already have this done i'm not going to run it again it does take a decent amount of time and i'm not going to delete that to show you again um, the first thing well so so now we have that done we need to get into our environment to run our tools so we can do conda activate and then tutorial environment there we go so now on the left hand side we can see tutorial environment and then we're running everything inside so all of the tools that we installed previously like we installed star already uh maybe not not installed let's try this Yeah, okay, so we could do conda, install, and then star. Where is this from? Bioconda, yeah. Okay. There we go, so now if we do star, there we go, so you can see all the different flags that pop up. We're not gonna use all of them. Um, 
there, there is a lot there if you want to look through the manual. In the future, like I said, we can go back through and look at some of those different flags to do different things for us. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is I'm going to remove the old folders. Let's see. All right. So now here, before I had the folders for uh, star aligned and star index, we'll build those now. So we'll make a directory for our star index. So now we have just an empty folder called star index. The next thing we'll do is we're gonna call star and tell it to run thread n. That's the flag to let star know how many threads to give it. Just give it as many as are available, I suppose. Um, run mode. The main, not the main thing, the first thing star needs to do in order to align is actually build the genome um, index file. So we'll do genome generate. And that's going to tell star, okay, everything that we're going to do here, we're going to create those index files. The next thing this genome dir directory it's not as straightforward as you would think so you would think that this is the directory for the genome file or the genome fasta it's not this is the directory for the star index output that star is going to make we're going to feed it right into into that folder the next thing is the actual genome fasta file and that's called genome fasta files and then we need to go into that must musculus folder and slash ncbi build and if we if you hear it beep and um, it doesn't do anything you can hit tab again to see what other options there are so we have now in this must musculus ncbi build 37 2 we have two folders you have annotation and sequence the genome file is, you could guess, in the sequence folder. So we'll feed it sequence. Then the whole genome FASTA. Then it's just called genome.fa. So that's our genome FASTA file. The whole genome of the mouse is in that, the, the DNA sequence. Then we tell it sjdbgtf file. This lets star know that the next file we're gonna give it is a GTF file, which is an annotation file of all the transcripts that we're gonna to try to identify with our reads. This isn't necessary. Uh, in, in the manual for star, it says that it can be run without this, but if you have an annotation file, it's recommended to use it. That way you can narrow down a little bit more exactly what you're gonna be looking for. Um, there are other tools out there that you can use for de novo transcript discovery and you wouldn't use this. Basically you take all of the different, so you build an index of all of your reads and then you try to map reads to reads and you see how long of contigs or contiguous sequences you can get um, based on the actual reads that you have instead of mapping them to a genome. But so here, the GTF file in our tar.gz is located in the must musculus and then ncbi build and then I'll press tab again to show the folders. So we did sequence, that's the genome file, and then annotation. So GTF is an annotation. It says where all the transcripts are inside of the genome, the locations. So we're going to go into annotation. Uh, genes okay and then genes.gtf genes.gtf and there we go so this is going to have star index the genome at the locations of all of our transcripts then later we can go back and look at the locations of our transcripts in the genome to find out where our reads are coming from so I'll give this a run and it'll take about probably 15 minutes, um, but I'll speed it up through this. That way you don't have to sit and wait for it.
Okay, so now we have our um, index built and everything is all in our star index folder that we had created, LCD. So here are all the files that starred created when building those um, index files, which is great. So now we can use those to map our reads or find out where in that genome our reads are from. The now, to do that, we'll do make directory star aligned. Ooh. We have this folder called star aligned. This is where we're going to point our output of aligning, just like we had done with the uh, genome directory here we're going to and it's not going to be called the same thing this and the next one uh, will tell star that this is where the index is instead of write the index here but same kind of idea we're going to point the output to our new folder that we just created for star align now for aligning I haven't been able to get star to work with the uh, flag inside that's read files command uh, zcat, which tells star that the files we're inputting are zipped. The way around it that I kind of figured to go with, it might not be the best way, uh, is to do beforehand gun zip and then put in the files that we want, which would be something like trimmed reads. And then from like previously when we had done it, uh, if we put cat and then that SRR list beforehand, it'll spit in all of those SRR numbers. So cat, there we go. It writes in all of those SRR numbers. Uh, we'll just end it again. So if we do gun zip, and I'll rewrite it in a little bit, but, and then trimmed reads underscore and for star uh, as opposed to, um, what is it, cufflinks or uh, what's the other one? A another tool, well, it's gonna bother me now. Top hat, just like top hat does. Um, Top Hat will take in all four reads in order to do transcript discovery, but we don't have that luxury here. We just input the forward read and the reverse paired read uh, in order to start mapping with, with star. So just like with Trimomatic, we'll do SRR um, cat. So we're going to spit in all of our reads and then because I, my hard drive really limits how much I can be doing at one time. I'm just going to give parallel one job. And then in here, we'll type that gun zip like we were doing before. And I'll show you how to do all of this in one line. So it'd be gun zip and then trimmed. Oh, it's not going to let me do that. Trimmed reads. And then Got to get into there. I think it's underscore one. Yes, underscore star p dot gz. So this is going to first get SRR twenty one twenty one seven seventy spit into here. Then it's going to look for all the paired reads. So this will be one and two, and then it's going to unzip them. When that's done, so we do this. When they're unzipped, then it'll go on to the next thing. So and and means that this has to complete successfully before moving on to the next part. And that next part is when we're actually gonna start looking at star. So we'll do star run thread n just like before, and we're gonna give it 64. Um, we're gonna skip read files command because I can't get that to work. And then genome dir is gonna be star index, just like it was when we were 
um, building the index, but instead of writing this time, we're gonna read the index from there. And then we want to read our files in. Just like before, we can do trimmed reads, bracket, underscore, and then one P, oops. And then we'll repeat it again, trimmed reads, bracket, or curly brackets, they're really hard to see, but they're not the square ones. And then 2P, this is giving our uh, star now the unzipped, so from here, the unzipped read files for read files in. Then we want to tell it out filter intron motifs. And we're going to tell it to remove all the non canonical reads or um, splicing. So uh, the remove non canonical tells star to remove the splicing variants that aren't what you would consider typical uh, dinucleotide combinations. So on each end, if you look at something like ensemble, you'll generally see the end of one that gets matched with the other is GTAG or GCAG. Uh, and what this is doing is saying, okay, if you find a splicing variant that, or a splicing location or happening that isn't typical, we're just gonna remove that. So we're not looking for those new locations. Um, and then we'll do, out file name prefix. So this is a lot like what we had done with um, Trimomatic. And we're gonna tell it that now we made our star align folder. We want all of our output to go into star aligned. And then we want it to have the same name. We're gonna feed in 21, 21, 770 and we want all of our output files to have that same naming. Then we can keep track of the, the, the files. The out SAM type, which is the next thing, is the output aligned file format. There's SAM and BAM. SAM is something that is human readable, whereas BAM is the compressed version. If you try to open up BAM, you're probably gonna get a lot of different symbols that make absolutely zero sense. That's just binary. It's what the computer can understand, but we, we won't make any sense out of it. And then we want that to be sorted by coordinate. It just makes it easier. When we're done with this, we have then our read files that are unzipped still. We want those re-zipped. That way we're not gonna take up too much space. We can do that by doing um, gzip this time, or we can actually use pigs. Let's use pigs. We'll be able to feed it as many cores as it can take. Probably will be hard drive limited, but at least it's not gonna be core limited. Like gzip can only have one core. Pigs can use as much um, as you give it. So pigs, and then we're gonna go into that trimmed reads folder. We're gonna look for our reads. So we have our forward paired and our forward unpaired with the, the input name. We're gonna just look for star P. Let's walk through this from the beginning now. What we're gonna do is open up that um, accession list. So that's what's over here on the left-hand side. We're gonna feed that in one by one into parallel. And we're only gonna have one job. We can bump this up to two, I suppose. And then we'll drop this down to 32. Let's do that. Okay, must not like that. So we're gonna start two jobs at a time. And then we're gonna feed it 32 cores. Okay. So we're gonna feed in one at a time these accession numbers. It's gonna to go to gzip and it's gonna get unzipped. That's the first step. If this is successful, which it should be, and that's what we're gonna count on here, we're gonna go into star and we're gonna start aligning. 
giving star the genome um, index directory, which is star index, and then our forward and reverse files, which is essentially trimmed. The same exact thing is here, except there's no GZ anymore. After that, we're going to filter them and we're gonna remove those non-canonical reads, those that have splicing um, ends that don't match the typical, the typical dinucleotide pairs. Then we're gonna give it the output name. So all the outputs have the same beginning, which is gonna be whatever this is fed into it. We're going to tell star that we want it, um, I missed it, that we want our output to be in BAM format. So out SAM type BAM with the BAM file being sorted by the coordinate that those reads are mapped to. After all of that is done and it completes successfully, so this means successful. We're gonna rezip all of our unzipped read files now. That way we're not gonna use up more hard drive space than we really have to. The only downside that I have come across for this is that as soon as you start running it, the files are gonna be, un are starting to be unzipped. If you run into an error in star, you'll have to go back and re-zip them. Otherwise, when this, if you try to run the same line again, this part is gonna fail because there are no files that have this name. In which case you can actually do, um, I think it's two vertical lines here. So let's see if I can get to the end. So instead of the and, what you can do is something like this. And I think this means that whether or not this is successful or fails, go to the next part. So if we have our reads already unzipped, we can tell it, okay, if this comes back with an error, just move on to the next part. Don't worry about it. Whereas right now we're saying, if this comes back with an error, skip this read whatever number it is, whatever it happens to be, and go on to the next one. That way we don't run into more issues come here, if that makes sense. So we'll back out of here and we'll give it a go and see if it... Okay, so this is a pretty good example of what has to, or of a problem with the Windows subsystem for Linux. We can see here the U limit dash N that it wants us to check and it's, um, we're gonna have to kill this. Um, let's do this in the background. So pigs and then underscore star P. Uh, within the yep, trim reads folder. So star, it's gonna go in the trim reads folder. It's gonna find all of the files that are, I guess this doesn't really matter then, are unzipped um, with an ending of P. So we can do control Z and then BG, like we talked about before, one, we're gonna throw that job in the background. Um, but back to this, this U limit. It's by default set at 1024. Uh, if that means from my understanding that only 1024 files can be open at a time, um, but we can just update, uh, increase that by doing U limit dash N and then something absolutely huge. With our U limit set, we should be able to go through and run this. And hopefully it works. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to keep it going. I'll do background one. 
see if we can keep it running. It looks good. Let's try top. There we go. So now one of our stars using 20 cores about and while well, the other one is still unzipping. Um, let's go back to the trim reads folder. Yeah, I don't know why it's taken so long. But the important thing or the reason, oh, there it goes. So first it's gonna load that genome index and then afterwards it'll actually actually run it. Uh, so there's another flag that we can use and I don't know if it would work in this case, but, oh, that's so annoying. But in here, what we can actually do is a flag that's um, dash dash genome load space load and keep. I don't know if it'll work for pigs. I don't know if it goes between the different jobs. So here we're doing two different jobs. I don't know if it would still have to load for both of them or if just one works. Uh, another thing to keep in mind here is we're going to bring this back. I'll show you. Um, another reason to do only one at a time is my RAM is starting to get up there. I only have 64 gigs and right now we're at 55 or so and it's loading in um, that genome. And you can see over here, it's using a little over 32 gigs for it. So it's gonna push some of that stuff to swap. Um, swap memory, which will slow it down too. But it looks like everything is um, running, which is great. Uh, for next time, I don't think we're gonna talk about how or what star is doing just because, or not what star is doing, um, all the different flags in star like we did with Trimomatic and um, how fast Q like the results of SQ work, just because there's so many for star. Um, next time, I think we can look at contamination of uh, uh, microbes. So looking at the 16S uh, viral, pff, I don't know, human. So this is mouse. We can actually look at human contamination to see whether or not the individual who is extracting the DNA or the RNA in this case uh, had some contamination or we can look at Phi-X contamination, which is a sequencing control, um, just a bunch of other stuff that we can look at uh, for next time. So if you leave a comment, we can I, can, I can go ahead and do whatever is suggested by you guys. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.